what I've got here is a no-bake lingonberry cheesecake cup. And you know, the lingonberry on top just, I don't know, goes great with the uh, sweetness of the cheesecake itself. So you got this creamy, creamy cheesecake here with a little bit of uh, maple syrup in it. Mmm. And it just, it's just creamy in your mouth. Now, if you dig down deep, you've also got this crust underneath here. Kind of a, a crumble. Mmm. And a bit of Demerara sugar in there and some graham wafers. Mmm. It's just a taste sensation as you go through the layers. Great thing is, you don't need an oven. Because there's no bake. All you do is whip up that base in the food processor. Mix this up with a mixer, pour it in on top. Throw it in the fridge for a while. Toss the lingonberries on top. You're good to go. So let's go in the kitchen and make some right now. We're going to use the food processor to make the first layer. The first layer is, is the crumbly uh, cheesecake crust layer. So what we have here is three full sheets of graham wafers. So you know, they come in the package like this, three full sheets like this, okay? Um, two tablespoons of demerara sugar. You could use a different brown sugar if you don't have demerara. I do prefer demerara for this. And two tablespoons of butter, which we just melted. So, first thing I'm going to do, kind of just kind of crumble up the uh, graham wafers and drop them into the food processor. All right. And we can uh, add in the Demerara sugar at the same time. What I want to do now is we want to process this until the graham wafers are all crumbled up and, and mixed in with the Demerara sugar. So, first, let's do that. Just got to pulse it a few times and just mix it all up. All right, sometimes what you'll end up with is you got a couple of little pieces that don't want to break up and they're just flying around in there, so you just kind of grab them and crumble them. Good enough. All right, that's all ready to go. So now, with the engine running, going to pour in the butter. So, let's put that on mix. Okay, now what's happened here is it's all coming together nicely. Um, so let's have to mix a bot from the bottom a little bit. A little bit of butter sitting at the bottom, so it's going to mix that around. All right, basically that's looking good. All right, that's the first layer ready to go. So what we're going to do with that is I have here four glasses. Let's get this out of the way. Four glasses, and I'm just going to divvy this up. Now what you want to do. You don't want to tamp it down in there, just drop it in loosely. Just uh, take a spoon, drop it in there. Drop in there. All right, that's the first layer done. And I just gotta shake them to even them out a bit, but we don't want to tamp them down. We just want to leave that in there loose. It makes for a really delicious uh, crust out. It's not really a crust, it's more just a crumbliness that you can dig in there, and like a crumble, right? It's fantastic. So, let's, uh, let's prepare the second layer. All right, now for the second layer, what we have here is we have cream cheese. That's eight ounces or 225 grams of cream cheese. Been sitting at room temperature, so it's a little easier to cream. Uh, we have one cup of uh, heavy cream, we're like about 35% uh, cream, and three tablespoons of maple syrup. So the first thing we're gonna do is gonna cream up cream cheese. Just take a nice spoon like this and just smear it around there to just to cream it up and get it a bit softer. Well, it's looking pretty good already. It's been sitting out at room temperature for a while. Not that this room is that warm, but warm enough to soften this up. So that's good. All right, now, 
going to add in the maple syrup. And look at that. This is a lovely dark maple syrup. Actually, any maple syrup will work fine in this recipe. You could use the, uh, a lighter one. I just happen to have the dark on hand. I like the robust flavor it has. And now, you can take a mixer and just start mixing that in. Now, with the mixer running, I'm going to slowly add in the cream. You don't want to add in the cream all at once or it's really hard to get the mix and you're spraying cream all over the place. So I'm just going to add a little bit at a time. Put that about medium there and there you go, some of the cream. Add some more. Make a mess of the counter. <laughs> Okay, now what we're going to do is going to mix this for about three, four minutes until this is nice and smooth and starts to kind of all come together nicely. And then we're going to put it into our cup. So about three to four minutes of mixing. That's only been about three minutes and you can see the whipped cream is starting to thicken. Now in summer, it's going to take a little bit longer. It is a little cool in here, so it's whipping up fast. But if you've got a really warm kitchen, you can go the full four minutes. What you want to do is you want to whip this until you're getting, see like the, the peak sitting in there? The whipped cream has whipped. Perfect. All right. Now, I'm going to get this extra out of these. Not all, because I'll lick these after. <laughs> that's, that's the cook's reward. Okay, let's put those aside. So, now what we're going to do is bring back our four cups and we're going to divide this up amongst the four cups. So just kind of slowly drop some in there. All right. Try not to get a mess on the on the cups. All right. So I'm going to use a spoon to help me and away we go. All right, now we've got it basically divided up amongst the four cups, and then just kind of settle that down in there. You can always uh, push down a bit. What I do after is, is after these are chilled, um, I just take a damp cloth and quickly clean off. So you can even just do it with your finger. You can go around here and get some of this excess off. And after the damp cloth, just clean that up a bit. Mmm, that is perfect. All right, so let's go tamp those all down. Notice, not perfect. There's little air holes and stuff. That just adds texture to it. So I, I just kind of push them down a little bit and then that's it. Now, what I'm gonna do with these, they're gonna go in the refrigerator for 30 minutes to an hour. Um, they can stay in longer if you're making them in the morning and you're gonna serve them in the evening, that's fine. But about an hour or so, or more, fine. And then, I'm gonna bring them back out here and we're gonna to top them with some lingonberry. All right. See you in about an hour. Right, so these have been chilling for about an hour in the fridge. And what I have here is two tablespoons of lingonberry jam. Now, if you can't find lingonberry jam, I get this from Ikea. Fantastic stuff. We use it for all kinds of cooking. I love it with venison. Really good on top of these because they're just a, the flavor sensation. So just spoon 
just divvy it up on, on the tops of each one. So you're putting about a, a half a tablespoon on each um, pudding or cheesecake. What do you call these? Cheesecake puddings. Cheesecake pudding cups. Alright, and one more up on top of here. Oh yeah, another thing I did was, um, after these had finished chilling, I just quickly, you can see, I just wiped around the edge with a damp cloth to clean off the glass. Not something you have to do, but if you've got uh, people coming over and you, know, you want this to look nice and fancy, then it's a good idea to do that. It looks nicer. All right, that's it. There we go. No bake, lingonberry cheesecake cups. Delicious. Enjoy them. Now, if you go to the link appearing on the screen, you can get the free printable recipe for no baked lingonberry cheesecake cups on our website. So go print out the recipe, have fun making and eating these, and make cooking fun again with Kuma's Kitchen. <laughs>